All right, happy Friday, everyone. So, thought I would continue on the uh, 11 cognitive distortions um, that are, you know, basically um, developed by Dr. David Burns, um, who was the pioneer behind cognitive behavior therapy. Now, as I said, I'm not expecting you to go and be well-versed in cognitive behavior therapy or even adopt that as something that you put into your health regime. Um, it is popular with certain um, psychologists and therapists but there are also a number of healers and heart math practitioners who would suggest that you need to go deeper than just your thoughts. So the idea of this is just to build some awareness um, because quite often we say things um, without even realising the impact and it influences the behaviour a lot more, but it also gives us some indication around what some of those subconscious and deeply embedded beliefs that we have um, about the ways of the world, the way that we see things and the way things that we are as well, right? So it does become important because these things can actually become the stumbling blocks for any of the things that we're trying to do in life, particularly when it comes to our health and fitness habits, right? They can sabotage us um, without realising. Anyway, so straight into it. Uh, so cognitive distortions, again, were, you know, thoughts that feel real, but we know deep down aren't. Uh, and, um, you know, our brains basically have this thing where... Um, they like to either overgeneralize, um, that really dislikes uncertainty, even though pretty much the only certainty is the amount of uncertainty that we have. It's trying to keep us safe because it perceives a lot of things as threats and it loves to overgeneralize because it's basically lazy, right? Like our brains are like, how do we get to a good result, keep you safe without using as many calories or too much uh, cognition because we only have so much thinking power per day, right? And our brain pretty much accounts for like 70% of the calories that we consume in a day, right? So our brains are basically, look, if there is one part of your body that is probably fat and lazy, it's probably your brain, right? But anyway, that aside, um, cognitive distortions can create a lot of issues for us and unnecessary stress. So we've talked about the first six. I'm now going to go on to number seven and eight. So number seven is emotional reasoning. And this is, you know, you pace your account of reality and who you are based on your feelings. So it could be something like, I feel bad, so I must also be a bad person, right? So you assign this kind of moral judgment or, you know, have you ever seen moral judgments? This food's bad, this food's good. It's like, it's just food. There's no moral judgment on the food, right? Like some food's better for you for certain things, but it doesn't mean the food bad or good, right? Um, and, you know, this is, um, emotional reasoning is also the extreme of, end of going with your gut, um, where you don't consider perspectives and evidence other than your own feelings. And so some further examples of emotional reasoning could be something like swinging kettlebells looks super scary and intimidating, so it has to be dangerous. So these are things that you're saying, right? Or saying things like, learning how to cook just feels so overwhelming, so it must be really hard. Um, I feel so insecure, so therefore there must be something wrong with me, or I'm just not worthy, or I'm I lovable, or I'm a loser, right? Um, you know, so all of those things aren't necessarily true, and it's not based on fact, right? It's like actually just based on this random kind of, a logical kind of uh, connection that we've made based on um, our view of a certain, um, a certain events, right? Number eight, I love this word, masturbatory, or uh, thinking, or shooting yourself in the foot. So this is where you torture yourself or other people with musts, shoulds, oughts, and have tos. So think of, and sorry if there's any Karens in the group, and I don't mean you specifically, but we all have that Karen in our life, right? Like they're either some sort of aunt or family friend or somebody, you know, a neighbour, like a nobody, like a, you know, a busybody that's in everybody's business, but also like appoints themselves as the moral director of everybody else, um, you know, and... Um, you know, instead of a di um and so, you know, they kind of like, you know, you need to do this, or you have to do this, or this is how things are done, um, and you, you kind of have that view and everything, and you set yourself up for failure with this, because you, you've got a lot of rules, and the only sure thing in life is that if you have a lot of expectations, is that you can experience a lot of disappointment, um, because things are never going to happen as expected, they, they just don't, it's just not the nature of things, right? So, um, and so when you have like these really rigid rules and um, expectations around how reality should be instead of how it is, then you're going to run into problems. Um, and so what happens as well is that, you know, in this case, instead of identifying our own deeper values and following our own inner compass um, of principles or truths, we start to focus on a set of external, uh, often imagined, obligations, duties and rules, right? And 
that leaves us always wishing that things were different by some sort of imaginary and arbitrary standard. And then, then to make matters worse, we then hold ourselves account for that and we make ourselves feel guilty, frustrated, um, and sometimes you know we might get defensive and unappreciated or we make others feel defensive and unappreciated. Um, and not to mention that this is an extremely exhausting way to live, right? Because you're just going to get uptight. You're never going to meet those expectations and you're always going to fall short and just feel miserable, right? So what you're doing is you're always swimming upstream against the tide of how things really are because you're not actually just accepting things for the way they are. And it doesn't help us move forward either, right? Like, um, saying you should do something doesn't actually ever make you do the thing or help inform a part around how you could or accept the reasons as to why you can't at the moment, right? So, you know, should people sort of think, oh, you know, they're meant to motivate you, like I should go to the gym, and or you should really take my advice. And what usually happens, right? Absolute opposite. It usually provokes rebellion and resistance within us. So examples of musticatory thinking and shooting yourself is people who care about nutrition shouldn't eat cookies. Cookies are every delicious, by the way. Um, fit people ought to look like, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 70s. Uh, I have to drink uh, when I go out because that's what fun people do. Um, you know, so over the coming days, um, you know, and there the heaps of those, right? So I'd love for you to share yours um, if you've become aware of any, and they'll probably come up through this weekend because you'll probably go and do things that you think that you should be doing because that's what a good parent does or that's because what a good friend does or because, you know, you've got to go to this event and you don't want to seem rude or you're doing something for a family member because you should do that because that makes them feel good or something like that, right? So there's all these things and rules and stuff that we put on ourselves that aren't necessarily true. Now, some of them, they might be, you, you could be quite aware of those. I'm inviting you over this weekend to maybe just test and do a bit of hypothesis testing on some of the assumptions you've made around some of those rules around how things should be, ought to be, and have to be, right? Um, so over the coming days, probably next week, I'll go through the last remaining two cognitive distortions, but then we're also going to deep dive into some practical tips around how do we manage that. Um, I've already shared a little bit of some ideas around that as we've gone through this series, but um, yeah, there's a few more. Um, and as I said, for now, I just want you to practice becoming aware of anything. You might say something and then realise, ooh, that was actually a distortion. Um, and, um, you know, or you'll think something and you'll be like, oh, is that really true? And the more we become curious about it, so the, the whole trick about this is to build self-awareness, is to become curious. It's not to beat ourselves up for going, oh my God, I just did another cognitive distortion. Because probably 99% of what we do is a cognitive distortion. They're not necessarily bad. That just create stress if we don't understand them and we don't have to necessarily change them either we just become aware of them for now so the other thing is as well is to put in the comments any that are coming up for you um, because obviously the more we share the more we can learn from each other um, and you'll probably find those common threads as well that people are experiencing the same things as well so anyway uh, let me know how you go and i'll speak to you next week